So it's been uh, more than three weeks since I contracted COVID, and it's good to be back to be able to celebrate a Sunday Mass here at St. Mary's. Uh, one thing that I'm grateful for was uh, it seemed that there was no transmission of COVID to the parish community. So that's one good thing to be grateful for. And I'm truly grateful for all your prayers. Okay? And uh, uh, because now I could say I'm COVID-free, no COVID. Uh, but my energy is not yet 100% that I'm able to jump off from cliffs and bridges. I'll get there in a few more weeks or in a few more months. In, well, right now I couldn't do it. It's winter. <laughs> so, uh, but, but thanks. Thanks to, uh, for, for all your prayers. Last week, we celebrated Gaudete Sunday. Gaudete is the Latin word for rejoice. Rejoice. It was Rejoice Sunday. So I hope you were rejoicing last Sunday. <laughs> so the first reading of last Sunday was from the prophet Zephaniah. And just to give context of what this reading was about, uh, prophet Zephaniah was a prophet around 600 B.C., okay? And uh, he was prophesying about the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem that happened in 587 B.C., okay? So when, when we would hear these this words from the prophet Zephaniah, it seems that it doesn't make sense. What does it say? What does it say? Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. And why would the daughter of Zion would rejoice? It's because the king of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. Doesn't make sense. The temple in Jerusalem would be destroyed after a few more years. But this is a prophecy that points towards the future. And this prophecy is fulfilled by Mary. When Angel Gabriel came to Mary, announcing to her that you will be the mother of the Savior. And when she said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done to me according to your will. And at that moment, she was filled by the Holy Spirit. And in her womb, conceived this king of Israel, which is in our midst. And because of that, she was full of joy. She was full of joy, okay? So we see here how this prophecy points towards Mary. And I could just imagine Mary holding her tummy for nine months with joy in her, in her, in, on her face. Okay? She couldn't believe that she would be the mother of our Savior. She couldn't believe that she would be the mother of God. She couldn't believe that she would be the mother of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace. For me, I would, I would hold my tummy and we'd have a smile on my face after having a good meal. <laughs> but Mary, deep in her soul, she was rejoicing. She was rejoicing because it, it's in her womb, there is our Savior. And that joy is so visible. That joy was so contagious because one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit is joy. It's so visible. It's so contagious. And also, she couldn't keep that joy to herself. That's why when she heard of her cousin Elizabeth, who's pregnant of old age, she went in haste. Okay? And when she greeted Elizabeth, and I could just Im imagine, like, you know, uh, Mary maybe being, uh, going to Hawaii and greeting her Elizabeth there, Aloha! Or maybe to the Philippines, Mabuhay. Or in China, Ni Hao. Or French, to the French-speaking, Bonjour. And when Mary heard this greeting of Mary, she was filled by the Holy Spirit. And that what did she say? What did she say? 
Okay? Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? Elizabeth recognized that this is not just her cousin, Mary. She recognized that this is the mother of our Lord. Okay? And not only that, she said, she said this, For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. The baby in her womb, John the Baptist, leapt for joy, dancing for joy. And this reminds us of King David. King David, uh, in the second book of Samuel, chapter 6, when the, the Ark of the Covenant was entering Jerusalem, King David danced for joy. She, he was filled by the Holy Spirit. He was dancing for joy because before him is the presence of God. Because what's inside the Ark of the Covenant? What's inside the Ark of the Covenant? The, the inside the co Ark of the Covenant is the manna, the bread, the food that was given to the Israelites while they were journeying in the desert. What was inside the Ark of the Covenant was the two tablets of the Ten Commandments. What was inside the Ark of the Covenant is the rod of Aaron, the high priest. And those three things points towards Jesus, who is the bread of life, who is the Word of God, who is the eternal high priest. So King David was dancing for joy because he was before the presence of God. And that's what John the Baptist inside his mother's womb, that's what he was doing. He was dancing for joy because before him, before him is the new Ark of the Covenant, Mary. And inside her womb is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Savior of the world. Okay? One of my favorite songs in Christmas is Joy to the World. So I hope uh, maybe you would sing that uh, during Christmas. How many of you are, uh, likes that song, Joy to the World? To the world joy to the world what does it say okay joy to the world the lyrics of that song is this joy to the world the lord is come let earth receive her king joy to the world the savior reigns let men their songs employ the question that i would like to ask you did all the people rejoice when Jesus was born? Yes or no? Yes or no? No. No, that's the right answer. No. Not everyone rejoiced because not everyone recognized him as the Savior of the world. Who rejoiced? Who rejoiced? Of course, aside from Joseph and Mary, they rejoiced. Who else rejoiced? The shepherds. The shepherds rejoiced. They were the ones who know that they know nothing. That's humility. Who else rejoiced? The three wise men. They were the ones who know that they don't know everything. And that's humility. Okay? We see here, those who rejoice, they acknowledge that, that, that they're lacking, that they are in need of the Savior, our Lord. When Jesus started his public ministry, did all rejoice? I'm asking you. No. But who rejoiced? Who rejoiced? They were the ones that John the Baptist prepared for his coming. The tax collectors, the prostitutes, the sinners, those who acknowledge that they are sinners, that they are in need of the Savior. They were the ones who rejoiced. During Christmas, you will be seeing a lot of nativity scenes inside the church, maybe in your home, maybe in your garden. You would see there Joseph, Mary, the Good Shepherd, the three wise men. The question that we have to ask ourselves is that, 
Are we experiencing that joy? Do we have that joy that Christ is born for us? Maybe you would tell me, Father, you don't know my situation. You don't know my problem. You don't know my struggles. How would I have that joy? How would have I have that joy? But joy is not based on circumstances. Joy is based in our relationship with God, with our Savior. And the more you, that you acknowledge that you are in need of a Savior, the more that you will experience the joy this Christmas. So when you're not experiencing the joy, ask for that grace. Ask for that grace that you will be able to know and acknowledge that you are in need of the Savior. So that when you experience that joy, when you experience the joy that's so visible, that is so contagious, you will be able to do what God has called you to do. And that is to be a messenger of joy. Mm -hmm.